Okay, hi guys. So, beds and mattresses. I uh, did a video on this a few years ago. It's a little bit old, so time for a bit of a refresh and just tell you how I, the kind of the principles and how I approach addressing if someone's potentially got a bed or mattress problem that's aggravating their back pain. So as a precursor to this, what I'll say in terms of people with back pain and beds, it's roughly a 50-50 split. There's a 50% of people, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Like it's, you know, it might make them sleep a little bit better, but it doesn't really make a massive difference. The other half of the people, however, it can make an astronomical, and I'm talking night and day difference to their, pro, uh, to their progress and the results that they get. Part of that reason is, and why I split, instead of just calling things pain triggers, I call them aggravators, because I like to, to split things up, because pain triggers generally people associate like an instant catch if they do a bad movement or a bad posture. What I look at is when I talk about aggravators, I took at active and passive aggravators. So a passive aggravator, is when you're in a, a slightly goofy position and you generally your mind's elsewhere and it very slowly, if you think of that analogy, the bank account drains that bank account and once that bank account gets to zero or overdrawn, that's where you have a massive flare up in your back. Also, the other sort of uh, problem that goes along with that is AMI or arthrogenic muscular inhibition. So when we have pain and instability around a joint, it's very common um, for that to cause like a secondary effect where certain muscles their um, neurological recruitment becomes heavily impaired. So in particular, that can happen to things like glutes and your core muscles. So if, you, you know, if you're if you one of those people that are unlucky with the bed, and particularly if you've got instability problems, like a, a loose joint, we've gone for the injury cascade to create a loose joint that's susceptible to micro movements. If you sleep on a goofy bed, what that's gonna do is at night, especially when you toss and turn, is it's gonna start to create those little pain signals in your back, which is gonna, through arthrogenic muscular inhibition, start to shut down the muscles you should be using to kind of hold yourself together and give you good movement. So in particular, you'll feel your glutes are kind of shut down, you feel very edgy in the, in the morning. So the injury pattern to look for before you jump down the rabbit hole is um, either when you first wake up in the morning and you're still in bed, are you in pain with your back? Or when you first get out of bed in the morning, is it all kind of a bit unstable and edgy and a bit stiff and a bit catchy until you start to get going, you know, start to get going, things warm up, does it start to settle down? That's something to look at if you've got that kind of injury pattern going on. Um, or the other thing is if you're, you've covered all your other potential aggravators, you're doing a good job with your exercise, but your response and your, pro your, your progress is super, super slow, almost like you've got a handbrake on somewhere, that can also be a sign that you've got a problem with your bed that's draining your bank account. So in terms of remedy, um, best thing to do in terms of a bed, and this supersedes everybody else's opinion, including my own, certainly supersedes that of the mattress manufacturer or their salespeople. And again, I'm not, you know, I don't get any kickbacks from any manufacturers or anybody at all. Um, so I just give an opinion what I've, you know, I've used, what my clients have used and what I think is actually good and things to try. Um, is whether you can sleep on that mattress or that bed for at least three to four nights. <laughs> okay, so most important principle, and uh, you know, it's kind of proof in the pudding. So you're going to be your own best judge as to whether your bed is going to be a problem for you or not. And the way to tell is to make a change and then observe results. So one of the best things to do, if you do suspect your mattress is bad and you want to replace it, um, is find a manufacturer that will give you the ability to try it for three, four, maybe even a week um, of sleep to, you know, to see if you give you plenty of chance to adapt to it and see if it doesn't make a positive result. Generally, you're gonna know almost after the first or second night, but if you can try a mattress for three or four nights, pretty much risk-free, that's gonna be your best tool to tell. And that far exceeds my opinion, your friend's opinion, your family member's opinion, and it certainly exceeds the opinion of the, you know, the mattress manufacturer or their salesman. Um, because if you sleep in something for three to four nights, you know if it's making a, a positive impact or not. So generally, the, the manufacturers that I recommend give you that sort of option, and I feel safe then to recommend them to my clients so that they can try them and actually see, you know, proof is in the pudding, does it actually make a positive result or not? So on that note, and again, I don't get any kickbacks for this, I'm not associated with any particular manufacturers, this is just what I've found, the mattresses that I've had and the mattresses that, are that I've recommended to clients based on that basis where they can try it for three, at least three to four nights, if not longer, and observe and see if it's the right thing for them. 
So my number one pick at the moment in here in Australia is a brand called Ecosa. I think they've got three different levels of mattress at the moment. Um, there's two that are a bit more sort of advanced, a bit more expensive. Um, but the one I recommend for people is just their basic mattress, which at the time of this video is roughly 900 ish Australian dollars for a queen size, something like that. Um, which when you compare to other specialist manufacturers is very cheap. Um, sometimes maybe a fifth of the price. Um, and again, the, thing that, the two things that gets me with this manufacturer that I puts me across the line, I'm happy to recommend. Obviously, I've got two of their mattresses, which I paid for. I don't get any freebies or discounts. Um, two things. Number one, most important, is you can try it in-home risk-free. If you don't like it, get your money back. I think currently, again, time this video, it's either 90 or 100 days they give you. But again, I'd say generally after a week, you're going to know for sure either way if it's the right thing for you or not. The second thing on that standing mattress they've got, because it's a three-tiered memory foam system um, with like firm, medium and soft bits, you can actually rejiggle it around a little bit to fine tune it to your particular tastes in terms of what you like to sleep on. Now, as of this video, so we're August 2023, um, I recommended it to 37 people. Of the 37, only one had to buy an extra uh, foam topper to make it a little bit softer to stick on top. So basically out of 37 recommendations, it's been a win for 37 different people. Um, there has been some more that I recommend in the past couple of weeks, so we're interested to see how they go with that. Um, so again, price is good, but it's got a good track record as far as I'm concerned, because I use them, I've got clients to use them. But again, the most important thing that exceeds any recommendation I give you or anybody else, especially from a manufacturer, is can you try it risk-free for at least a few nights, if not a week, and then assess and see if it's the right thing for you? Because that's what you have to do. You cannot go by recommendations from a manufacturer or a salesperson, and you cannot go just by going to a store and lying on it for five, 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes while a salesman's talking at you. It just isn't gonna work. You need to sleep on it for a few nights, assess it and see if it's the right thing for you or not. Um, and again, for some people, it doesn't make much of a difference, but the other half of the people that I suspect has got a problem, it can make an astronomical night and day difference to them. As in, they'll feel miles better, the bank account gets way bigger, and they get a far quicker response from their exercises, and it digs them off that edgy, kind of twitchy hole very, very quickly. Um, but again, most important thing, you need to be able to try it for a few nights and assess and see if it's the right thing for you. What I can do um, also is I'll give you some recommendations, things to try before you jump into buying a new mattress, just to try and see if it makes a difference before you start spending some money. Things to try before you sort of jump head into buying a new mattress straight off the bat. Uh, number one, double check it's definitely the mattress and not the bed. So if you've got a framed bed, best thing to do is just double check that the frame's still square. Um, there's no screws or attachments coming out like things aren't falling off or just work their way loose. Underneath the mattress, check the base that it's on. So some beds have like a slat system, like wooden planks. Make sure those wooden planks haven't like moved apart from each other, creating like a soft spot, or they haven't like uh, fractured. So if you push the slats, make sure they don't sort of like give way or bend or buckle, because obviously when your weight's on there, that's what's gonna happen with the mattress. And if you've got a good mattress on a bad base, it's not gonna do much for you. So just rule out that the bed is a problem first of all. Make sure it's got a sound foundation for your mattress. And then we look at it, it might potentially be a mattress. So a couple of things to, to try, and I'll give you some examples on the floor. Okay, three things we can try before we jump straight into buying a new mattress. Number one is we can make like a, lump, uh, a makeshift lumbar support by taking a, a fairly large towel, rolling it up into a sausage, and I've just put rubber bands on each end so it holds its shape. And what we would do is lie it in the bed. You want it to be long, so that you got support during the night if you're on your if you're on your back you got support then also if i roll to my side it still give me some lumbar support for sort of lateral instability as well so you can roll around on it and you've got plenty of support all night long obviously the rubber bands stop it from kind of um, unfurling during the night just see if that makes a difference either way and see if that changes you so if you get a difference even if it's worse with this, you know, there's something not quite right with the bed. You've changed one dynamic or one aspect of your environment. It's made a change either way. You know, the problem's here somewhere that we need to start looking at. So that's one thing we can do, a sort of rolled up lumbar support or sausage, I call it. The other thing we can do um, is actually the mattress itself. If you look at it, 
and you think it might be a little bit warped or it's, it's kind of um, worn unevenly, is to pick it up and rotate it 180 degrees and put it back down again and see if you feel better for that. Because um, sometimes that can happen because you might have one part that's heavier than the other, so one side might wear out quicker than the other. But if you flip it 180 degrees, like pick it up and rotate it, you can usually change it. Generally now on most mattresses, you don't want to flip them upside down because um, the way they're constructed, they've, you know, um, most modern mattresses are usually like spring system memory foam on top. If you flip it the way up, it's going to be extremely uncomfortable. Um, even the memory foam ones now, because they've got different layers to them, they're designed to be sort of one way up versus the other. So the best thing to do is to pick it up, rotate it 180 degrees, put it back down again, and again, observe results. The other thing you can do, if you generally prefer um, a firmer mattress, and you think yours is a bit too soft to try, is you can actually sleep on the floor, use the same um, rolled up towel sausage idea for lumbar support, and just see if that feels a bit better if you've been on the floor versus your bed. Usually that's for people who really don't like soft mattresses, um, and usually they'll feel slightly better on the floor. It's not perfect, but usually you'll get a slight improvement from that. Another good rule of thumb as well is basically any mattress, I don't care how fandangled it is and how expensive it is, generally you're going to have to replace it around about six to eight years into its life is the average for most of them, sometimes a lot sooner than that, especially if you notice it's already started to sort of misshape and warp a little bit. Um, so again, even if it's a super expensive one, if it's worn out and it's knackered, it's worn out and it's knackered, simple as that. Um, so those are things to try before you dive into the mattress. Um, and again, in terms of mat you know, recommendations, if you're in Australia, I like the Ecosa brand. There's another brand called Koala that are pretty good as well. My preference is with the Ecosa. I've got better results with them for myself and for my clients with back issues. But the Koala one's still a very good brand to try. Again, both brands, which is the kicker for me, give you free in-home trials. So if the mattress is no good, you call them up, they'll take it away, they'll recycle it and give you your money back. Um, that's the best thing. That supersedes anyone's recommendations on particular brands. You have to try it for a few nights and see if it's the right answer for you. And again, for some people, it's kind of a nice to have. Other people, it'll make all the difference in the world to have a decent mattress.